In this video, we'll be making a pumpkin spice wine spritzer. Welcome to Thirsty Thursday, everybody. I'm Mark, this is the Average Me Channel, and continuing our series of fall drinks. And no, it's not drink it drunk in fall. It is autumn cocktails. This is the second one that we've done. We're gonna be making a pumpkin spice wine spritzer. Now, I don't usually make cocktails out of wine. I've used wine as a floater, but I think this is only the second time since we've been doing the Thirsty Thursday, which is what, over a year and a half now, that we've actually done a wine uh, cocktail, a cocktail whose primary ingredient is wine. Now, the unusual thing about this that you might say is I'm not gonna be using a wine glass. Typically, when you serve wine in a wine glass, you don't add other ingredients to it. You certainly don't put ice in a wine glass. So um, I think you're gonna like this one though. I've not tasted it yet, but it sounds really, really good. So let's look at the ingredients. We're going to use pumpkin spice liqueur. Now I'm using Mr. Stack's brand. That's um, not a top level, but usually when you have these flavored liqueurs, um, you know, often they are low to mid range. So I knew I'd be making this cocktail. So I just got one of the sample sizes. I don't know what this is going to taste like. So we're gonna have a little taste of it before we put it in the cocktail. We're going to be using a white wine. I'm using uh, Pino Grigio. Now this is a pretty sweet white wine. Depending on how sweet you want your cocktail, you might want to choose, uh, you know, you could choose a Riesling or whatever you'd like but uh, we're going to use a Pinot Grigio and we'll also be using some tonic water. Um, you can use salsa and club soda once again to your taste. We're not going to get into the difference of between tonic water, salsa and club soda. Maybe we'll do a video on that one day. And for a garnish, we're going to be using cinnamon sticks. Now think how stupid this would look if you would put a cinnamon stick in a wine glass. So we are going to use this low ball glass. What's the difference between a low ball glass and a high ball glass? Very little. Typically a low ball glass is smaller in uh, volume. That's about it. So let's get started. So this is pretty straightforward. We have the low ball glass filled with ice and we're going to put in one ounce of the pumpkin spice. And I know there's a little more than an ounce in this sample size. So I'm gonna just taste a little bit because I'm really curious what this tastes like. Mmm. Well, I wouldn't want to have too much of this, but it really is reminiscent of like an Irish cream, but it certainly has that pumpkin flavor. You know, like you would have in a, a pumpkin pie mix, something like that. It's really quite tasty. It almost tastes like, like the frosting on a pumpkin donut that you know you get at Dunkin' Donuts during the season. So we're gonna put in an ounce of that. Now, typically I would just top it off with the wine, but you know, on this channel, I do like to, um, to give you the ratios of things and so, what we're gonna do is we're certainly going to use the ratio on this wine. So, now I don't know if you prefer a, um, a corkscrew, additional corkscrew. I really like these uh, where you inject the air and it comes right out. I'm going to link this down below, but it really is a, a pretty cool gadget for removing the cork from wine. This needle, goes right through and then you just pump air through the needle and it forces the cork right out. It's really, really pretty cool. So we're going to put, oh my goodness. We're not gonna be able to get our four ounces in this glass. I guess I should have used, what do they say in Jaws? We should have got a bigger glass. So top it off with um, a little bit of tonic. It doesn't take much tonic anyway. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to um, transfer this into a different highball glass. I wasn't anticipating doing this, so I don't really have a glass ready, but we're gonna do it and then we'll pick up where we left off. All right, this is the only one I had handy. This is the one that I bought at the um, Corbett Museum. And I think this will be a slightly bigger glass. There we go. And then we can top that off with the tonic or seltzer. And that is about what you want. Now, I do need one other thing because I saw when we transfer that over, and this is all just a learning process, right? I've never made this before, but I did see when we transferred that over, this did settle. So I'm going to get myself, um, you know, a swizzle stick just to stir that up a little bit. Boy, I don't think I've ever had such uh, a clumsy cocktail where I didn't anticipate what was going to happen, but uh, let me get a swizzle stick and we'll get to work on this. Okay, I have a collection of swizzle sticks that I have saved over the years. I don't, it's not a collection in that I display them on a wall or something. They're just in a, a couple of glasses. And this one is from Caesar's Palace. This has got to go back, I don't know, to sometime in the mid eighties, um, I would guess. So we're just gonna stir this up a little bit. Again, you don't wanna use, uh, stir it too much and take all that carbonation out of this. And I'm not gonna leave it in there because of course, I guess I could have uh, just stirred this up with the, the cinnamon stick as well. And the cinnamon stick goes in there. And there it is. So I'm going to quick snap a picture of this and we'll give it a taste test. All right, we're back. And this cocktail does have a tendency to separate. So, um, you know, mixing it up occasionally isn't bad. You know, it doesn't have much of an aroma at all. Kind of surprising. I'm not smelling the cinnamon. I'm not smelling the pumpkin spice. I'm kind of surprised, but let's get the taste. Wow, that is um, a different tasting cocktail. So I'm gonna see if I can get it stirred up a little more, see if I get any more of the flavors. Of course, the wine is a predominant flavor here. I'm not getting hardly any of the cinnamon stick. So I'm, I'm smelling it a little bit when I really get down there and smelling it. But when I just bring it up to my mouth to get a drink, I'm not getting a lot of that. I wonder as I continue to sip on the cocktail, if the cinnamon stick isn't going to start to release a little more flavor into it. The, uh, the wine is the predominant flavor. And as good as that pumpkin spice was, I'm not getting a lot of it in this drink. I'm getting a hint of it, which is really a surprise to me. So this is a very, very light cocktail. So if you're looking for something um, just very light, um, you know, it's not, it's not as sweet as you would think it was using a uh, relatively sweet white wine and a sweet uh, liqueur. It, it doesn't taste really all that sugary and that overwhelmingly sweet. But it does taste very light. It's not unpleasant. It, it is a really nice drink. It just didn't have all of the powerful flavors that I would have anticipated and expected. And yeah, it's, it's a nice, light, pleasant cocktail. And I would suggest give it a try. Um, it, it seems like it'd be something that would almost be more of a, um, an aperitif type of a cocktail rather than something that you would have after your dinner. Mm. Yeah, normally I would have thought that this would be an after dinner drink because I anticipated it to be much more, um, you know, sweeter and richer, but it's very, very light. So I think you could, um, you could have it either way 
and it would be uh, a really great cocktail. It's, um, if I sound like I'm disappointed, I'm not disappointed. I think I'm surprised that it, it is, that it's so subtle. And I think that's one of the good things about a cocktail like this. Now, I probably should have anticipated the size of the glass. I knew how much stuff I was putting in here. I knew there were ice. I knew that there were five ounces of liquid plus topping it off with, um, with the tonic. So, um, you know, live and learn, right? But I think this is worth giving it a try. You know that I will always tell you if a drink isn't worth doing. And I've had a couple of bombs on this channel. This is just way different than I expected. Um, but it's a pleasant drink. It, it's not a bad drink at all. Is it something that I would order at a bar? Probably not. You know, a wine-based cocktail, maybe it's just a little too unusual for me. But just the same, it's a pretty good drink. And I think you will enjoy it. If someone served this to me, I would certainly enjoy the cocktail and I would drink it. Mm -hmm. Just a little unexpected. So if you try this drink, let me know. Leave it in the comments down below. Or if you have your variation of a wine-based cocktail, I would love to hear about it. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner. And don't forget to ring that bell icon up above. That way you'll know when I post new videos. See you back here next week on Thirsty Thursday. I'm Mark, and this is The Average Me Channel.